Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you a simple Angular and Web Audio API application with which you pick an audio file, play, make changes to the audio, and download back the file with the changes that you made. Take a pause on this drawing, try to imagine the process visually. I'm going to give a very simple example, one way out of so many to do it, just for the purpose of showing you how you can make it work. I had a debate with myself arguing whether I should take it step by step and write the code along the way, and I decided that showing the code would give a higher view of things, and I hope that when you code with Web Audio API, you would understand why I chose the practice that I used here. You should test and find your own way of using it in your personal project. So assuming that you have an Angular project running and already installed Web Audio API and File Saver, which we will need, I'll show you the code and try to explain what is going on. So we'll move all the way to stage number four. So I'll start with the main module file and you can see that I imported the audio context module with this line and received it with this line here. Next is the HTML file. And you, can see, you can see that I'm using only one component here. So in my HTML, I have a few buttons and one input. Each of them have, has a function, which I'm going to talk about right away. Next is the controller. So in the controller, I'm importing the audio context and savers from file saver module. Starting here with my class, you can see that I have class parameters. Each of them has an explanation in the comment right here, and I need them all for my functions. In the constructor, you can see that I don't have anything because I don't really need it, nor do I need the ng-init method for this specific project. The first function is called initiate audio context. Now, every user has to activate the audio context by himself. Otherwise, browsers don't like and probably won't allow the audio context to be initiated by itself. So this is all the purpose of this function, just to initiate the audio context. Also, I'm starting the gain node here. I'm creating it and the panning also. These two are for making changes to the audio file. And in the end, I'm just logging this line just to know that audio context has initiated. So if I'll go to the project here and I'll start this button, I'll press this button which initiates the audio context and I'll go to my console. You can see that audio context has initiated here. Moving on, this is the choose file function. It is activated whenever I choose a file here. So what it does is it grabs the file, creates a file reader, and then it read, reads the, the file as an array buffer. When the file loads, it takes it and creates an audio buffer. I grab the audio buffer and I bind it with my class parameter here, which I called this buffer, because I need it for my next functions. Next here is the play function. First, it is dealing with a condition. If the audio is playing, don't do anything. But if not, move on and change the Boolean to true. This line here is commented because I don't need it. I already initiated the audio context properly. But if I didn't, I would have to resume the state of it. Next is I'm creating a buffer source node with this line. I'm grabbing the buffer that I created before from my file. I'm putting it in my buffer source node here. And what I, what I need to do now is to connect the buffer source node, which is the first interface always. I connect it to the gain that I created previously and the panning, and in the end should be this CTX destination which in my case here is going to be the speakers of the device of my computer. Next method for it to work you need to write start to it 
uh, if I would press zero, it would be this, it would be the same. It would start immediately. And if I press five here, if I put five, it would start after five seconds. So the numbers inside are the seconds. What I'm doing here in the end with this line is just grabbing the buffer source node because I would need it for my stop function. So I'm binding it with my class parameter. Next function is the stop button. If the file, if the audio is not playing, don't do anything. But if it does move on, change the Boolean to false, create an audio buffer source node and grab the buffer node from my class parameter and stop the buffer source node. That's all. Next function is the change. Here you make changes to the audio file. I'm making the changes with two uh, effects, two kinds. One is gain and one is panning. I'm grabbing the gain from my class parameter, the same I'm doing with the panning, and then I'm changing the values, the gain to 0 0.5, which is half the volume of the track, and the panning, I'm changing it to minus one, which is all the way to the left. If I wanted it to be all the way to the right, I would uh, put here the number one. So the numbers should be between minus one and one here. Okay, so next function is the save function. What it does, it's saving the file, downloading it after the changes, if I made them. So I'm creating an offline audio context here, which is very similar to the audio context. Only this offline audio context, what it does, it brings me the audio buffer in the end. Instead of playing the file, it gives me the audio buffer and I can do with it afterwards whatever I want to do, like downloading the file. To create an offline audio context, I need to bind with it three parameters one is the buffer number of channels, next is the buffer length, and next is the buffer sample rate. I take them all from my buffer source node, from my class parameter, which I uh, created previously. So this is the offline audio context, very similar to the audio context. Next, I create a buffer source node with my local offline audio, offline audio context. I grab the buffer and I put in my buffer source node. I create again and panning just like I did with the audio context. And I take their values from the, the previous values uh, of my gain and panning. And what I do, just like I did with the audio context, is connecting the buffer source node here to the gain, to the panning, and in the end to the offline audio context destination here. I need to write the start method for it to be activated. And then I can write this method for the offline audio context, which is called start rendering. It gives me the buffer and I'm just grabbing it right here. And this is how I can get the buffer from the offline audio context with the changes. From this line onwards, all the code that you see here is copied from somewhere uh, in, from the web. Uh, and what it does, it's just, it just converts the audio buffer to a WAV file, to a play, playable WAV file. So you can copy all this code from here, or you can later on uh, copy it from my GitHub link, which I will leave at the bottom of the video. So all this is just copied from the web and it's just for converting the audio uh, buffer to a WAV file. So we'll move on to the project itself. And we already started, we already initiated the audio context. I will choose a file now. And after I chose it, I can play the file. And I can also stop it. I can abuse the buttons because if you remember, I have uh, this uh, Boolean condition. Uh, so if we'll 
play only once and it will stop only once. Now, when I press this change button here, it will make the changes that I wrote, uh, the changes for the gain and the panning. So you won't hear the changes because I have only one microphone here. But uh, yeah, I can tell you that I'm hearing half the volume and I hear it only to the left side of my device. Uh, now, if I press save, it would just download the file and I will just, I'll just get it over here at the bottom. Uh, you can add a, an indicator uh, if you want uh, to show the client that uh, his file is downloading. So you see, I have the file here and if I take it, I will hear it and I will see that I got the same file with the changes that I already made. So that is all. I hope this video helped you with uh, figuring out how to work with audio files. And if there will be a demand, I will gladly make more videos uh, uh, with more in-depth uh, tutorials uh, to show you how you can work with uh, Web Audio API. Thank you and goodbye.